Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Blessed of the feast of the entry into Egypt by our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Family. And this is a feast that only our church celebrates because he came to the land of our ancestors, the ancestors of our church, the ones who paid the price, a heavy price, in order to love Christ so much. And I want to talk about a little bit of the blessing of being in the Coptic Orthodox Church. Because sometimes we could take it for granted. And especially as we see maybe other churches that look prettier or uh, have bigger buildings or maybe are more widespread. But to be blessed, part of this tradition, our Coptic Orthodox Church, holding on to our faith for these 2,000 years and holding on to it with our blood. And I will share a little bit of why I love to be part of our tradition, our Coptic faith. And this is not a pride that's an earthly pride, but it's an honor, a blessing to be part of our tradition. First off, the fact that our land was blessed by the Lord's presence while he was here on earth speaks volumes. It was prophesied out of Egypt, I called my son. So God from before the foundation of the world had ordained the land of Egypt to be a safe haven for Christ, his mother, and of course, Saint Joseph, the adopted father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So as the Lord came to the land, it said there is a tradition that the idols of Egypt began to totter and even many of them fell and were dashed to pieces because the Lord of glory was entering the land. And as we know, our Lord Jesus Christ and the family were fleeing the wrath of Herod. Herod wanted to destroy Christ. It didn't say that he wanted to kill Christ. He wanted to destroy him to wipe any memory of him from the face of the earth. And as we know, the evils that he went through to kill all babies two years old and younger. So our Lord Jesus Christ spent approximately three years with the Holy Family, and they visited in many parts of Egypt. And another prophecy was fulfilled, which was, there will be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt. There will be an altar to the Lord, and this is recorded in Isaiah 19. There will be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, Isaiah 19, 19. And geographically, right in the center of Egypt, there is a monastery, and that monastery is called Deir al-Muharra. Have you heard of this monastery before? Deir al-Muharra. Muharra means burnt, the burnt monastery, because of the the region in that area looks this way. And so, our Lord Jesus Christ with the Holy Family, tradition says that he lay on a stone there, and this stone now became a consecrated altar. And this altar was consecrated by no other one than the Lord himself. Tradition also tells us that the Lord came after his resurrection and anointed and consecrated this altar. And there is a prophecy that this place will never ever be harmed, will never be attacked, will never have a natural disaster affect it till the end of time because the Lord himself blessed and consecrated this altar. And truly in these 2,000 years, there hasn't been an attack or any harm done to this monastery. So it's a safe haven. It's a blessed place. And... When you go there, you will visit the Holy Land because the Lord himself blessed that place. Also in Isaiah 19, 25, it's recorded in the scriptures, blessed be Egypt, my people. And of course, when it talks about Egypt, it's all of those who join the Coptic church. It's not talking about those who worship, worshiped pagan idols. 
and it's not talking about other religions who don't believe in Christ as the Son of God, one of the Holy Trinity. It's talking about those who would be devoted and follow him. And when the Lord gives a blessing, it's a promise and it's a blessing till the end of time. When he said, blessed be Egypt, my people, he didn't mean it for a certain period of time. This is ongoing for all those Copts, the Coptic Orthodox faithful, who will follow him. And why would he say that? Undoubtedly, he knew the amount of blood that would be shed. When you say the term, the Church of the Martyrs, it is synonymous with the Coptic Orthodox Church, the Church of the Martyrs. That's how much blood has been shed. Men, women, and children. Many children gave their life for Christ in our blessed homeland. The Coptic Church not only is faithful in her martyrs, but she is also faithful in her theology, which has never changed these 2,000 years. Producing giants of the faith, such as St. Athanasius, St. Anthony the Great, and St. Cyril. Giants of the faith who will forever make their mark on the Christian tradition. And we are so honored that they are part of our tradition. St. Mary, of course, as she was protected in the land of Egypt those few years in, child, in the, our Lord's infancy and in his early childhood, she repaid a visit and we all know the story of Zaytun. In 1968, when she came on top of the church of the Virgin Mary in Zaytun, people saw a woman standing up there and they thought she was trying to harm herself, that she would throw herself from the top of the church until the Christians realized this is not an ordinary woman, this is who? The Virgin Mary herself. Virgin Mary. And millions of people, maybe even some of us here visited that church, maybe even at that time. Millions of people saw her. Many people were healed. Many came to Christ. People from all denominations saw her. Undoubtedly a miracle. And the blessing of the Holy Virgin Mary blessing our church. And so we were so in tune with Christ's life. When somebody asks me today, well, why are you part of the Coptic tradition, Coptic Orthodox Church? Not only was I only born in it, and this is why I remained in it, but I never have seen a church that is so faithful to her Christ. And she resembles Christ more than any other church. The Coptic Orthodox Church loves and resembles Christ more than any other church. Why do I say that? First off, when the Lord Jesus Christ came, what happened? It said that his own people didn't accept him. His own people did not accept him. His own people denied him. And if you look at the Coptic church, more than any other church, it has not just only been persecuted by pagans, but by even others who call themselves Christians. When there was a split between the Byzantine and the Roman church and us, they began to persecute us. Tens of thousands of Christians were killed by others who called themselves Christians. Father Lazarus, St. Anthony, who was a monk in St. Anthony's monastery and he's living as a hermit like St. Anthony lived. He said something so beautiful that really was profound and opened my eyes. He said the reason he is Coptic is because the Coptic church has the least blood on her hands, if any. It's so sad that when politics enter the church and rulers have a big say on what goes on in the church, oftentimes there is bloodshed in the name of Christ. 
It is so sad and wicked and satanic. So the Coptic church, we have been blessed never really to be in a position of power. <laughs> we have been blessed never to really be where the king is ruling is part of our tradition. It's a blessing for us. We have always been persecuted even till this very day as we all know. A young man said something else that I really loved. He was born and raised in the United States in the Midwest, has a, having no idea of what orthodoxy is, let alone Coptic orthodoxy. And he decided he wanted to find the church that loves Jesus Christ the most. Because there's tens of thousands of denominations, tens of thousands. So that's a lofty goal, a young man in his early 20s, wanting to find the church that loves Jesus Christ the most. I think that's a goal that we should all have. And it was around the year 2015, early 2015, and he began to read and research and saw that the early church was very different than the church he was going to at the time. It was a Baptist or non-denominational church of some sort. And he saw that the early church was very liturgical and very focused on the Eucharist. And so he saw that there were a couple of traditions that were maintaining this throughout the centuries. Until he saw on the news 21 men on their knees being beheaded by ISIS. And he said, who are these? And of course he found out they were Coptic Christians. One of them joined the church. And he said, what is this? And he looks up Copts, the Coptic church, and he hears the term, the, the persecuted church or the church of the martyrs. And then it clicked with him. He said, why he joined the Coptic Orthodox Church? It was one plus one equals two. The church that has suffered and been killed most for Christ must be the church that loves him the most. Does that make sense? The church that has suffered and been killed most for Christ must be the one that loves him the most. Because there is no greater love than for one to have, than to die for his friends. So men, women, children, countless martyrs have been killed in the name of Christ for our best friend, our Lord Jesus Christ. How honored are we that we have our faith today because of them, because the Lord preserved them. And the Coptic church will be a very faithful witness in the end of time. God had to preserve a church that has suffered so much persecution, that has been attacked so much, in order to show a faithful witness in the end of time, how to stand in the face of persecution, how to endure, how to offer our blood gladly for our faith. To the point that when those martyrs and many others in recent times when they celebrated the bringing of their relics or they celebrated their funeral, and I say celebrated their funeral because look at the masses, what they did. They chanted carrying their dead bodies saying, we have martyrs, we have martyrs. And they began to cheer and rejoice. In the early time, at the time of the Roman persecution, we all read in the Synexarium, when there was a town who was persecuted and tortured and killed, the neighboring towns, what they would do, they wouldn't run away. They would say, let's go to the town. They, they have martyred him. St. Anthony the Great himself left his cave to go to Alexandria to be martyred. He wanted to be martyred. The Lord told him, no, this is not my will for you. And where you see a, a persecuted church, there you will see the real Christianity. 
Where you see the persecuted church, there you will see the real Christianity. We have a convert, a friend of mine who was a convert into the Coptic Orthodox Church. She said, I, re I joined the Coptic Church because they are the Navy Seals of Christians. Do you know what the Navy Seals are? They are the most highly trained, uh, those who are standing on the front lines, those who have special skills in order to protect the country. They put them through grueling exercises and tests to see if they can last and endure the most extreme so that they can protect this country. So the Copts are the Navy SEALs of Christianity. We are on the front lines and we have been enduring this for 2,000 years. And gladly, because we love our Savior, we gladly lay our life down following his footsteps. I will share one last thing about the Coptic Orthodox Church and why I love it so much. And this is something as simple as taking off our shoes. You don't find in many other traditions, only in the Oriental Orthodox Church, when we approach the Holy of Holies, we take off our shoes. I know that's something so simple. And maybe we've done it so much, it's become like second nature to us. But it speaks volumes. Taking off our shoes, approaching the mysteries, how can we not? When did we get this tradition? How did we understand this? When Moses saw the burning bush alighting from afar, yet it was not being consumed, he began to approach it. What is this wonder? And God spoke from the bush saying what? Take off your sandals. The ground you're standing on is holy ground, hallowed ground. What is more holy than to receive the body and blood of Christ? What is more holy? Nothing. It's more holier than the burning bush. Why? Because we receive him inside of ourselves. And I love our Eritrean and Ethiopian brothers and sisters. Do you notice where they take off their shoes? Not inside the church, outside of the church. And if they could put it in the street, they would. But they would probably be taken in our neighborhood, right? <laughs> because they realize what sacred mystery we have before us. The Coptic Orthodox Church has been the most faithful church to Christ, never changing her theology, always enduring, and on top of all of this, even being persecuted by other traditions, we are praying for the unity and seeking to unite again. We will turn a blind eye to what they did to us for the sake of unity because this is what Christ's prayer in John 17, that they may be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they may be one in us, that they be made perfect in one. I in them and you in me, that they may be made one in us. We hear our Savior's cries. We hear his heart that is breaking for the divided church. May the Lord heal the schisms of the church. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the age of all ages. Amen.